So last Q and A, I was asked, would I make any more videos featuring my photography? Uh, I was asked by um, Lee Price, and my answer was yes, I will. So this is that video. This is about my photography. I'm going to show you some photos and talk about them. But first, I'm going to talk a little bit about the kind of photography I do and how I do it. Um, I got into photography as a kid. Uh, I had cheap, crappy, Instamatic type cameras to begin with, which was point and click, hope for the best. And then one Christmas, uh, 1977, I was in hospital having my appendix out Christmas Eve. And uh, I got treated like very uh, special. That, wow sentence uh, extra bonus presents basically at Christmas and my dad gave me a SLR camera I can't remember who it was made by um, it probably was nothing special but anyway I, I really got interested in photography at that time though not to the point that I actually learned how to make use of a SLR while my dad gave me the camera, what he didn't bother to do, even though I asked him, was teach me how to use it, what what the aperture settings meant, what the F, F settings were all about, um, what time exp exposure was about. Like, he told me what they were, but not how to make use of them. So, uh, yeah, I didn't... I just left the camera on automatic, focused manually, and that was it. Um... But I, I got an interest in photography from that point, though I swapped that camera years later, which was a really dumb move um, for... I can't even remember what it was. Um, it wasn't a good swap in, in retrospect. But anyway, after that I had like a series of point-and-shoot cameras. Then I got into digital cameras, uh, starting out with a Kodak EZ200, which was <laughs> junk, but it was relatively cheap. Um, something I could afford anyway. Then I went up to a Fuji Fine Picks something or other, still completely automatic. It had an incredible zoom on it. That, that was amazing. But, you know, you couldn't do anything fancy with it. You had no manual control. Then I got a um, Panasonic DMC FZ50, which I still have, uh, which had manual controls, and I learned a little bit with that, but not a lot. Then I started doing a photography course with the Open College of the Arts. I didn't get to finish the course because my marriage went to hell and I moved out and I couldn't afford the course anymore. Um, nor had the time, in fact. But... One of the things I learned from that course was how to actually use a camera properly, how to make use of the aperture settings, the shutter speed, um, that kind of thing, ISO settings, um, focal distance, all of those things. The camera I got to do that is this one. It's the one I use to this day, Canon EOS. 1300D, bottom of the range, basically it's an entry level digital SLR. I think it goes up to 18 megapixels, which is nothing spectacular in this day and age, but it does the job. Um, I use it to put lots of photos onto, I say lots, 300 and something on Instagram. Uh, I used to put photos on Flickr, but they kind of have changed hands a few times. What used to be a good photographic service, if you like, is now... I don't know what it's like now. It was good, then it wasn't. Then I stopped using it. Instagram is all the rage. It's like if you want to get noticed, you do it on Instagram. So that's where I put my photos. Um, but my... What I take pictures of... Um, I don't know if you'd find it interesting. I, I sort of found what I like to shoot. It took a while. Um, I used to try and take picture postcard type, type photographs, holiday snaps if you like, find a nice pretty scene, take a nice photograph of it. That's what I used to do. Um, 
Then I did the photography course and was taught the artistic way, or started learning it anyway. Um, learned that what I had been doing was incredibly derivative and really was not art, which is what I wanted to do. I, uh, while it's nice to take pretty photos, a pretty photo is a pretty photo, but it's not art, is what we were taught. Art makes a statement or something. And I learned a whole load of stuff. And having discontinued that course, I have pretty much rejected. Now, I haven't rejected everything I learned, but I don't do any of it. I'm like, I don't want to do that. A great deal of that, to my mind, is bullshit. And I'm not interested in it. Um, with a few exceptions, my favourite art uh, photographer, photographic artist, let's call him what he is, because he doesn't actually touch the camera, he's more like a director, is um, Gregory Crudson. I love his photographs. They are art. Um, I love looking at them, but I wouldn't want to do that myself, because they are entirely staged. Um, and what I do is take photos of things as, as Jo has described my photos. I mentioned it in my last video. Um, she describes my photos as bits of buildings. Um, I take photos of scenes. I shoot them in a particular way to try and capture what it is that I'm looking at that I find interesting. Um, and that can be several different things, but I, I shoot in a couple of different ways. Um, apart from the, the most obvious being, if I have a portrait orientation, I shoot in colour. If I have a landscape orientation, I shoot in black and white. I use some fairly muted presets for the... It's like film developing, if you like, or even a, a Instagram filter would be a really crude comparison. It's a preset for Lightroom. It's just kind of how you develop the image from the raw digital negative, if you like. Um, but those are... They're like an afterthought. My photos aren't about whether they're in black and white or colour and whether the colours are muted or not. That is like a almost trivial aspect of what it is I'm trying to convey. I shoot in one of two ways, mostly. Um, there's a word for each of these styles and I can't remember what they are but w one of them is to use leading lines where you're looking into the image and you, it's all about depth and conveying that depth and another the other way is what I would call face on you're looking directly at a thing there is no perspective whatsoever it's just it's like a slap in the face with an object, a solid object. It's just like, bam, there it is, slap bang in front of you. Um, and I try to shoot in one of those two different ways. And it's all about light and shade is an aspect of it. But mostly it's either about create, uh, depicting a mood or it's about... Um, geometry is a lot of it it's been described as urban geometry um, th there are lines and shapes mostly triangles and um, rectangles and Joe's just got back so I'm going to edit here and rejoin you later or in your as you perceive it in a moment okay can't remember what I was talking about um, I think I was talking about the geometry, yeah, rectangles and triangles, not so many circles, um, and light and shade. And you might wonder, what's that all about? Um, and I'll, I'll, I'll have to try and explain it when I show you the individual photos. But the whole point, it's not... Well, some of them are to provoke an emotional response, and that sounds like a line from Blade Runner. But it's more to create a visual sensation, and I don't mean sensation like, wow, but like... I don't even really know how to explain it. When you've got light and shade, and you've got areas of 
negative space, basically a big area with nothing in it and then a whole load of stuff going on somewhere else and things seem to, it, it's like osmosis on a photograph where areas of high density flow into areas of low density. Well that's how it feels, I mean it obviously doesn't do that, there's no motion in it because it's a photograph, but it creates a mental sensation in your brain box. That's the idea. Whether it does that for you, I don't know, but it does it for me. If I see uh, a scene that does that, I try to capture it. It is kind of difficult because Instagram is an asshole. It dictates the aspect ratio of your photo. I mean, it used to be your photos on there were square and that was it. Oh dear. <laughs> Cat fight. <laughs> Um, but now they're rectangular, but still Instagram dictates. Um, so I wind up cropping bits of my photos in a way that I don't like. It's like I, I, I can't shoot it as Instagram is going to display it. Uh, the the um, portrait shots on my camera are taller. You know, I'm shooting it like that and Instagram's cutting it down to like that and trying to get that crop just right so that the image is still conveying what I want it to is difficult and sometimes they lose something. And that's frustrating. Um, I showed you the camera. What I didn't mention was the lenses that I use. Mostly actually just one lens. And this... It's not going to matter to most of you, you're not going to care, but there may be those who are interested. When I showed you the camera a minute ago, it had the kit lens on, which is an 18 to 55 mil zoom. Um, mostly I don't use that, mostly I don't like it, it's very limited in terms of its aperture settings. Um, but I had that on there because the last time I was using it, uh, all shots taken from within a moving car. Um, the next series of photos that will be going up in a week or two is that series and having a zoom lens is useful when you're in a car um, but mostly I shoot with a 50mm prime lens uh, it's a Chinese clone I think it's Chinese and not Japanese it might actually be Japanese but whatever it's a clone of the Canon Nifty 50 which is a lovely lens and even the the clone, I mean it was £36, it's dirt cheap, but it takes lovely photos. And that's what I use most of the time, which is, while what I'm doing is technically street photography, it's not the kind of lens you should use if you were doing street photography. They say use a wide-angled lens and getting close. Well, I don't want a wide-angled lens, I want to be able to have a shallow depth of field, and I don't want to get in close, because I'm not shooting people. Very, very few people will ever appear in my photos because I don't do people. Though, you wouldn't know that from that series I did not. So, well, actually it's from like about three or four years ago, but I uploaded not that long ago. Shots in Sheffield. But that was because I had to. When I'm doing my own thing, there aren't people. Not very often. Okay. I'm going to move on to the photos. I'm going to, to a degree, make like my dad. And show you a series of photos, it's going to be like an old school slideshow and I'll talk about each photo, a little bit about where it is maybe, but more about <laughs> why, why I took it. Hello Rhino. <laughs> Rhino has joined us. Joe's sitting right next to me as well. You want to say hello? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Slideshow. Okay, this first picture is just titled Railings. Um, it's a view that I see or saw almost every day. It was on my walk to work every morning and on the way back every morning. Um, it's looking, I can't remember, is it? it's up the river into town in Worksop. The relevant thing with this picture, or the thing that the statement it's making, is not 
about the scene you've got the leading lines of the river uh the, the edges of the river bank kind of you're looking into the image towards all the buildings but it's all about the railings and the footpath going bam straight across blocking your way blocking your view uh, it's meant to create a sensation of unease if you like it's um you shall not pass you shall not see this pretty scene it's not especially pretty in this view this this and several of the photos that are to follow were shot on the first morning of lockdown uh, i was taking advantage of the permitted hour walk for exercise so i was walking for an hour for exercise with my camera and it, my mood crept into the photos it was an overcast morning it was dull it was miserable it was quite cold and that comes across in the photos and it was that there's this sense of foreboding because it's like lockdown coronavirus don't know what's gonna happen are masses of people gonna die i mean forty thousand have died at the time of doing this didn't know was it going to be thousands tens of thousands hundreds of thousands millions there was a real sense of anxiety and that seeps into these pictures in certainly in this shoot anyway and that the railings across blocking the way that was like lockdown you're not going anywhere mate that's that's what that's what is intended with this picture um yes it might sound like a load of pretentious twaddle but that's the way my mind works when I'm shooting and it doesn't matter if anyone else sees it that way it's just how I do pictures the title of this one is holes it is um, shot at I'm um, pointing the camera at the window it's a window display of uh, I'm not sure if it's a restaurant or whatever um, so you've got this panel on the other side of the glass that's full of holes uh, but what you can also see is a reflection in the glass uh, there are traffic lights there's a bit of a sunrise going on back there you can sort of get a hint of clouds so it's it's minimalism in that you've got like solid gray to the left that vertical bar and then you've got this brown that's full of holes. It's two, a gray rectangle and a brown rectangle full of holes. And those are the primary objects in the picture. Um, and they're, how to describe, it's really hard to explain. <laughs> I like taking images where it is just or looking at images where you've just got solid blocks of color or not color the gray is like that's not a color and there's a solid bar of it and then a big block of brown but it's full of holes with gray um but then you've got this reflection as well that sort of suggests you're looking at this two-dimensional uh, spatial the existence of just like blocks but there's this other thing that's sort of seeping through there's there's a world there as well that's just hinted at um it's kind of what it's all about abstract it's an abstract thing of solid colors and non-colors and whatnot and shapes but there's this other world creeping through it um it's just hinted yeah i don't know how else to explain it it's i totally get that probably a lot of people will look at this photo and say what the hell why did you take that but it's it's all about like a dual existence it's it's about appreciating solid blocks of color with holes as a detail to give it like a texture but it it's got this other thing seeping through as well very hard to explain hmm I'll stop trying
This one is called Slates and Sky. Um, for obvious reasons, the main things that you can see are slates on the slate roof and the sky. Um, it's There are two things here that interest me. Uh, the geometry of big blocks of matter, if you like. They're just blocks of something within the frame. There's the brick wall going up to the slate roof and then there's another bit of roof further in the background just creating a horizontal line. Um, and then you've got the sky behind it. But there's also this one... Is that a slate or is that a window cut into the slate roof? I'm not sure, but it stands out from the rest of the roof. Um, and it's quite eye-catching. And the the relationship between the wall and there's like there's a light bit of wall and then dark wall. And then that darker bit of roof in the background. The, it, the relationship between them and then this brighter sky in the background that there are clouds is nice it gives it some texture um i like the way it feels and then the wall is just kind of like dingy and it looks dirty whether or not it is it doesn't even matter um it's all very dark it's slightly underexposed it was like 6 a.m at the time it was just getting light I was deliberately underexposing because I like to do that. I like things a little bit dark and then I tweak it in post on Lightroom. Um, and the slates, it's it's got this old, tired, slightly knackered feel about it, which I, I like places that look like they're falling apart or about to fall down. And you'll see that in some later photos. I like derelict places and even places that aren't derelict but look like they're bordering on that. Um, so it's partly about the geometry. It, it's the lines, the relationship between the, the roof and the wall and the, the roof in the background and that big block of sky and the general knackered kind of <laughs> feel of the place. Yeah, that's what that's all about. This is called Barber. Um, partly because, well, Alan Barber, written there on the sign, and obviously the Barber's Shop pole, which is what caught my eye. Um, uh, you, you've got a bit of urban geometry going on there. You've got the horizontal lines and the vertical lines, uh, but there's also a leading line, that diagonal of the roof going down into the shot. Um, and it's not really that's not really what draws me to it it is the um the light tells you it's really early there's probably no one about well i can tell you there's definitely no one about because lockdown and then here's this barber's pole thing it says there should be people here this should be a vibrant place with people getting their hair cut and sitting and chatting and whatever but actually it's dead it's a dead place it's it's almost zombie apocalypse dead um uh, it's just suggested by the light you can't tell that there's no one about the shutters are down you can just about make that out um yeah it it's it's kind of sad i like the pole i like the shininess of it and i mean that's is that red and blue? Whatever, you can barely make out the colours because they're so muted. Um, partly because of the light, partly because of the uh, the preset that I use. Um, it is, it is it's that suggestion that everything is not how it should be. This is called Chub. Nothing to do with fish. That's the name written on the that pale blue triangular burglar alarm. And that is kind of what this picture's all about. Um, I would kind of have preferred it if I wasn't having to look up, though that creates a mental sensation in itself with the perspective and the depth of field, the, the closest images, the, the bricks are uh, out of focus, and then the, the, the ornate stuff at the top of the building is also out of focus, but that triangle is as near as damaged in focus. 
Um, I like the way it stands out from all the other stuff. It's quite an old building. Uh, the red brick with the is that white or yellow or whatever. Uh, I don't know if that's brick or stone, but you know bits bits that break up the the colour. Um, and then bam, here's this big plastic blue triangle right slap bang in the middle of it. It it leaps out and says, "I don't belong here." Um, I like that. And then the, just the whole looking up thing. There's sort of a bit of gives me a bit of vertigo looking at it which is weird because i'm looking up not down but it does that so it's really about this one thing the color is different the the materials are different everything about it says it doesn't belong here it stands out coupled with the uh, the depth of field it makes for a striking image to my mind this image is called off license see if you can guess why but it's the fact that there's an off license there is absolutely irrelevant i have this thing about where i name photographs if there's any writing in the photograph i use that as the title of the photo um or numbers if there's no writing but it's not about the off license it is about squares really um, squares of color, squares of space, uh, or rectangles. You've you've got the you've got the rectangle of purple color over by the off license. You know you've got the shutters and then the purple wall. Then down at the bottom you've got a blue rectangle, and to the left of, the left of that you've got a, a shuttered blue rectangle with another blue rectangle above it and a whitish rectangle above that and the knackered old board painted blue where the paint's peeling off there's a whopping great big almost square and then directly above that that window it's almost slap bang in the middle of the shot and that i love that how that just sits there but the whole image is just full of rectangles and squares um kind of all forming around that window in the middle that there are two birds sitting up there on a uh, TV aerial is neither here nor there. <laughs> so it's kind of cute that they're there. They're, they're kind of like photo bombing, if you like. Yeah, but this image is is just all about squares converging around a square window, and they're all different colours and textures. Um, it's not about anything. It's literally is just geometry and it catches my eye uh, I don't know why it just does this one is called for sale uh, I really like this I think this is possibly my favorite out of the whole set certainly of the color ones um, it's all about how you've got that ornate looking it's probably a Victorian era church with the spire it's a very fancy looking building and it, it would make a great photo, but bam, there's this for sale sign falling off a wall. I mean, everything's just knackered and falling apart. And here it is, the sign is falling off the wall and obscuring your view of the church. But not just that as well, the, the photo is like sliced down, almost down the middle. I wish I could have got it down the middle with that lamppost. It's, it just like cuts the picture almost in half. Um, it's kind of... It, it, it's about physical or mental disorientation or discomfort. You want to see the church, but you can't. And not only is, is your view obscured, the whole thing is being sliced in half. It's like visual... Uh, hooliganism or vandalism if you like yeah visual vandalism it would have been a lovely shot but no all of these things are just wrecking it um, and it's kind of deliberate you know yeah I could have taken a nice shot of that church but that's not it's not about being a nice picture of a church it's about god this place is falling apart and the 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 mental visual discomfort of having things just rip through what could have been a nice photo.
This one is called Coffee, because written somewhere on one of those signs, it says Coffee. It's probably one of the few things I could read while I was uh, titling it. I can't, from where I'm sitting now, I can't even see that, <laughs> but I know that's why it's called that. This is another view that I, when I'm working, uh, before shut the uh, lockdown, uh, I would see this every single day. That's not the pub that I work in, but I walk past it every day. Um, this, it's not really conforming to any of the rules I set myself when I take photos. It's uh, it's not about urban geometry. It's not about any kind of mental sensation. If anything, it just represents lockdown because this was the first day of lockdown and everything was closed. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I kind of, I like the line of the, the, the pavement, the curbside as it goes around the corner and down the hill. Uh, really, there's nostalgia? I don't know. It's kind of like a oldie, worldie, it, almost timeless, but not. The railings are kind of modern. The street sign is fairly modern. The the, the actual pub signage and, and shutters are modern. But there's something old about it as well, which I like. And black and white helps that. But I think it's just, to me, it's massive familiarity of that scene because I see it so often. And I like those lines. I like that curve on that corner. I like that wall that goes down there and seeing the buildings at the end. Um... But yeah, but including this at all is breaking my own rules of what I take photos of. It's not a pretty picture, but it's it's a picture of a scene. And I don't normally do scenes, but eh, I wanted to include it anyway. This one is called Broken Roof. And again, I'm breaking my own rules in terms of subject matter, because this is not urban geometry it's not minimalism, it's, I suppose, it's street photography. Um, but what it is, is about decrepitude. It's about abandonment and things falling apart through neglect. It's not, it's not a protest. It's not saying, oh my God, do something about this, or isn't life terrible? Isn't the world going to hell? Isn't this a terrible town? It's not. It's I like the way it looks. I like seeing things that are falling apart. Buildings, rusting cars, rusting anything. I like rust. Um, yeah, I, I just like the visual impact of decrepitude. Um, and that's what that's all this photo is about. It's not... It's not social commentary on the state of the town. It's just... Look at this, it's knackered. I like it. This photo is called Bar, because one of the storefronts, it says Bar. Whether or not the place is just called Bar, I'm not sure. Um, it's all back to front, as you can see. I haven't reversed the photo. It is a reflection in a... I'm not sure if it's a window or just a mirrored panel on the side of... Uh, it's a nightclub on the way from my place to where I work. It's a, it's one of the many... This whole set, largely, or a large chunk of it, are things that I see on my way to work. And I like this reflected view. Um, I see it as I'm walking to... There's, there's a pedestrian crossing that I walk past part of it. And when you look across, you see this. And it's great. It's like there's this whole reflected world and there's also a bit of urban geometry going on here it's like you've got you can see a bit of the brick wall of the building that the mirrored surface is set on um i'm not sure if that second that this black vertical i think actually no that is a pole i think that's a reflection of um I'm not sure if it's a traffic light or a thing that holds the button you press, but it's a pole, and I think it's being reflected in the mirror, window, whatever. But I like that. I like the way you've got the squares of reflected, reflective surface and reflected image, and everything's backwards. 
it's it's cool. <laughs> I, I can't explain it more than that. It's it's urban geometry with the world back to front, and the way it feels at the moment, the world gone mad. This photo is called membership because again you can see that word written up there on a sign in the window of a it's a gym this photo is entirely about urban geometry um again it's another one that's it's a reflected scene um it's reflected in i think this building used to be a mcdonald's once upon a time the last thing it was used for was a chinese restaurant but anyway um I like the balance of the shapes. I mean, ignore the fact that there's a building there. That isn't, it's not relevant at all. It's all about these vertical rectangles. Um, you've got that part of the building, it's like a darker gray rectangle, vertical, right slap bang in the middle of the image. And then a dark, black, thin, narrow, tall rectangle in the reflected thing over on the right and that's balanced out by the vertical of a street light I think on the left. Um, there's a lot of balance to the lines on the image. You've got some roof lines there uh, going at a diagonal uh, and the way they they're set against the pale blocks of the sky it's just all about the balance of blocks of grey. Um, yeah, <laughs> the, the, the objects, and this is the truth with an awful lot of the photos I take, the things that are in the photo are absolutely irrelevant. I don't take photos of things, I do take photos of bits of things, but what those things are bits of just don't matter at all. It's the balance of the shapes that create the sensation in my head this is one of those this one is called no littering which initially seems like a really strange thing to call a photo that looks like this um, it, you gotta it, this is a confusing photo initially because I'm looking in through a window the camera has focused on the banisters inside what is a closed down Chinese restaurant and you have got out of focus in the background uh, some double doors uh, wall panels and stuff which create a whole load of rectangles and, and squares which by now you will have realized I like rectangles and squares um, but also you've got a reflection of the street scene that's behind me and it's really difficult to actually tell when you're looking at this what is in front of me and what is behind me well one of the things that's behind me is a sign that says no littering uh, hence the title but it is that uh, sense of mental confusion things that are in focus you can clearly see what they are and how on earth do they relate to anything else that you can see and not knowing what's in front of me and what's behind me uh, uh, coupled with the geometry of vertical lines, diagonal lines, uh, squares and rectangles. Um, it's, it's a very confusing photo and I really like that about it. And the overall balance of the shapes I find very pleasing. This one is called Brazil which is an odd thing to name a photo that is of a closed down cafe but you've got that writing on the box down in the bottom of the window that says Brazil and that's how I name my photos if there is writing in them that becomes the title why didn't I call it Cadbury's Bourneville this is a brand name don't want to get into trouble um also, there's that writing reflected in the window. What does that? I'm trying to see what that says now. I can't read it. Something? No, I can't read it. I haven't got the image blown up big enough on here. But uh, this, it, uh, squares and rectangles largely. But it's also, I like how you've got the window itself is largely dark. The, the door looks black, the panel in it looks black, it's different shades of black, if that's possible. Um, 
you got this white line just cutting down over on the right hand side which i like along with the horizontal of what what is it some kind of countertop or whatever i'm not sure but this cloth i'm not sure what it is that's hanging in the window but fallen down that's what makes this photo while i like the balance of the horizontal and vertical lines and panels and things and the whole you've got all this black and then this fallen down cloth is what makes the photo it, it says there were people here there was activity here people did lived parts of their lives here and whatever and it's all falling apart because lockdown it's abandoned and stuff is like going to pot if you like uh it is that that sense of it was left in a hurry um i mean that was lockdown has pretty much fizzled out now i mean yeah, people aren't out as much as they used to be but for a while when lockdown was new when it was just started the world did seem deserted i mean i would go out for my exercise walk and it was just like zombie apocalypse and this just looks like that hastily abandoned this one is called bus oddly enough initially when i started framing the picture up it was about the i'm going to use that word juxtaposition between the shutters separated by that vertical metal bar and then the broken window to the left and how you got white with the horizontal lines and i like just repeated horizontal or vertical anything i like repetition um with black and it being shattered it's just like the contrast between the two is intense and then all of a sudden while i was framing the picture up a bus came up behind me it stopped at the there's a junction and some traffic lights behind me um and i thought damn i'm gonna have to wait till it goes because it's ruining my shot and then i realized no if i position myself just right i can get both the headlights either side of the main part of that fracture in the glass and vertically speaking it's slap bang in the middle um and I just thought that's perfect. Um, it's like a pair of eyes peering out from behind the glass, though obviously they're not because it's headlights behind me. But yeah, there's also, I, I get uncomfortable when I take photos and I know that I'm being watched, in this case by the bus driver. Um, I see people, when I take photos of things like, a broken window or a storefront or something like that people look at me and think why is he taking that photo that's not a pretty picture what's he up to is he casing the joint is he going to rob the place is he what's he doing so it's like when vehicles come up behind me or people or whatever i get uncomfortable and i don't know if that's conveyed in the shot if anyone else would feel a sense of unease looking at that but i absolutely felt an intense unease while i was taking it um and i feel it when i look at it now because i remember how i felt when i took it this shot is called traffic lights for obvious reasons and it may look very familiar to you because it is basically a reworking of my earlier shot called holes though it is also quite different from that shot where previously the the photo was all about the contrast between the light gray and the dark brown with the holes and the the reflected image was secondary and just seemed to seep through slightly here you don't even get the contrast of the gray and the brown uh, the holes are fairly secondary and it's about the reflected image you can see more of the world out there uh, you can see the traffic lights very clearly you can see the clouds in the sky and there's a silhouette of something behind me it's actually a, a matalan uh, across a car park about 100 yards away but it, you can tell there's something there and that that is more it has more visual impact but the holes in that panel are kind of superimposed on it 
creating a kind of a surreal image, I guess. It's somewhere between abstract and surreal. Uh, is it saying anything in particular? No, but then not many of my photos do. It's just about a mental sensation, which, yeah, I don't know how to describe it, but it's there. This shot is called The North because it says the north on that road sign that, that you can see. It's reflected in a shop window. Um, the white vertical bar that you can see is a window frame. Everything that you can see, or almost everything that you can see, is reflected. But you can just about see some, I think it's furniture, there's something in the shop. It might actually be a restaurant or a cafe, I don't remember, that I'm looking into the the image just as a, a street scene itself doesn't make sense there are shapes there that aren't part of the street scene they're objects in the cafe and it makes for a slightly surreal slightly i don't know about dreamlike but it, it, it it's kind of odd um and i like odd things This shot is called K, which is, eh, it's sort of a joke because you've got that letter K just down in the bottom left of the window there, because it, the obvious thing to have called it would have been until there's a home for everyone, or maybe cash, which you can see in reverse uh, reflected in the window. But I thought too obvious, uh, K, because it's sort of, social commentary you know uh, until there's a home for everyone yeah, it's, mm, you know talking about homelessness and everything but the place is empty it, it's kind of it's kind of a ironic joke or something because there most certainly isn't a home for everyone but clearly the place has shut down there's no one there They're, they've got the decorators in or they did have until lockdown um, so it's like, okay, it's sort of like looking at the slogan and saying, yeah, right, okay, we believe you. Um, and there's cash in reverse, like, yeah, I ain't got any of that. Um, really, everything that's reflected in the image is secondary. I like that you can see it. You can see where you are. You can see that really you're in a real dump of a town. Um <clears throat> Everything's shut down. Even the places that are meant to help the people who've got nowhere to go have shut down. Um, social commentary or just extreme irony? Call it what you like. This is almost the same photo as the last one. It's called Decorating Interrupted. Uh, it doesn't have the social commentary element to it. It's more surreal. It is quite literally, you can see the town behind you, you can see what's in front of you, and it is, everything is stopped. There's nothing happening. Lockdown, virus, the world has literally stopped. Um, and that's, that's all it says. It's not, it's not social commentary at all. It's not about what the building is and what its purpose is. It's purely nothing's happening everything stopped. This one is called Mood Lighting and you wouldn't know it to look at it but it's shot on a completely different day from the last several photos. This is a completely different shoot, uh, different weather, different lighting, different everything. Same time of day but it's maybe a week later I think, not sure. Um, Anyway, th this, there are a couple of things that drew my eye here. Partly, as the title suggests, it's the lighting. The light being cast from that street sign onto the wall and the way it has quite an effect on the scene because it was still fairly dark. It was early in the morning, so it cast a noticeable light onto the scene. And I also like the, well, the quality of the bricks and the clarity I was able to get from the shot, just, it's, 
I don't know if it's like an old medium format photograph, but it's got a level of clarity in there that I really like. And the the pattern on the concrete or cement that's, uh, I don't know what you'd call that, where they've patched up the wall uh, with cement along by the street sign and it's all stained and discolored by water, I guess. Uh, I like that. It's all kind of grubby looking. The whole thing is like old and dingy and kind of miserable looking which sums up works or pretty perfectly actually so yeah th there's no real um geometry going on no, no urban geometry there's no specific things of interest it's just the mood and the feel and the atmosphere of it just dingy and miserable which i like <laughs> i like dingy miserable photographs This one's called Ominous Red Bricks. You wouldn't know they were red bricks. Uh, they're painted, actually. It's um, really quite an artificial red. Uh, but the way the uh, black and white process works, they, it looks black. Um, I like the really it's rectangles, isn't it? They're just these huge, whopping great big lumps of rectangular nothingness, really. It's kind of like imposing blackness at very in your face there's barbed wire there and I do like I like the way barbed wire looks um, it's curious this one actually because it, it got more likes than most of the other photos in this sequence and I don't understand why because it's kind of a horrible photo um, it, it, it's it's powerful and in your face, but it's nasty and quite why so many people liked it. I have no idea, but cool. This one is called Open Window and Railings for obvious reasons. Um, it, it surprises me actually. This one got significantly fewer likes than the previous one. <laughs> when to my eye it is a much much more pleasing photo um vertical railings i like repeated lines so that bit i like the open window not quite slap bang in the middle of the shot i would have liked it if i could have got it in the middle but just the way the scene is i couldn't get that in the middle but it is, it, 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 this is pure urban geometry. It's all about the shapes. There's lots of rectangles, horizontal lines, vertical lines. You've got these railings right in the foreground that you can almost see right through because of uh, the way depth of field works. Um, so they're kind of there and they're not. And I like doing that in photos. Um, a lot of people, if there was something obscuring the view they would move to get a shot without that thing in it where me if there's something obscuring the view great i'll use it i'll use it to create a kind of a jarring visual effect like oh i wish that wasn't there well good you're meant to it's meant to be Ugh. yeah it's uh it's a deliberate thing it's not a mistake that those railings are there This one's called Till Further Notice. It's like a classic lockdown photo. It's it's all of those signs in the shop windows are just saying, you know, we're closed due to coronavirus. We won't be opening until blah, blah, blah. Um, which is, so you've got the, the historic value of it. It's documenting the start of lockdown but there's more to it than that there is the urban geometry aspect of it you've got all these squares and rectangles and horizontal lines and vertical lines and i liked the fact that you have got mock tudor windows being reflected in the glass of shop windows that are kind of modern ish uh, I, I, I'm, don't know if that's modernist or postmodern or just utilitarian but whatever they are windows reflected in windows i like that i like the uh, the worn 
front of the porch, whatever that is, the, the shop front, at the top of it is like all worn and knackered and really could do with a lick of paint. Um, yeah, and the general balance of the windows, and the vertical and horizontal lines and everything, just to the right of the, the doors and windows, you've got this vertical bar with shutters to the right of it. It, it sort of... A purist would want the image to be to have the center window in the center of the image and I don't do that I'm like no you're gonna have this little bit of dead space over to the right deal with it this is possibly one of my favorite photos that I've ever taken it's called reached for the sky didn't make it um, Part of what I like is the phone lines, I guess they're phone lines, coming from the telegraph pole, uh, stretching into the corners of the frame of the photo, kind of making a cross, if you like, but they're sort of radiating out. Um, the depth of field, it's out of focus at the very bottom, and then it's out of focus at the very top, like just blur central at the top, but then you've got this plant that's been growing up the telegraph pole and it's in sharp focus just like about a foot above where the lens is I guess um, so that the only bit that you can see clearly is this plant and it's dead it's like it's I don't know like a alien creature was crawling up the telegraph pole but it died before it could make it. Uh, it basically the council have chopped it off at the roots to stop it growing up there and but they haven't removed it they killed it and left it there <laughs> and it's uh, it's just brown and dead like some alien skeleton um, that's uh, maybe that's just the way my mind works but that's how I see it is it was reaching for the sky but no failed This one is called Locked In. It's uh, very much commentary on lockdown. Um, it's not... I see it as obvious what it is, but one or two people who've seen it are like, what's that? Who are they? What's what's going on? This It's a shop window. It's a clothes shop. And there are mannequins in the window with clothes on, winter clothes. They've left the light on inside so you can still see them. There are shutters down over the shop window, but the shutter is constructed in such a way that you can see through it. It's, uh, it's full of perforations. It sounds like a Tetley tea bag. 2,000 perforations, let the flavour... Yeah, OK. Um, but you can see through the shutter, so you can see the mannequins, and it's like ha locked down, locked in, they're locked in, you, you're not allowed out because of the virus, and here they are, they, 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 there are just people locked in. It just, it seems so representative. And the way you can see them through the shutter, I think, is great. You, you can sort of see the colours, but not, and then the preset that I use that mutes the colours anyway. Um, and repeated horizontal lines, well, you'll have got the gist now that I like repeated lines, be they horizontal or vertical. Um, yeah, I like this one a lot. This one is called No Way Through. Uh, it's called that, I suppose it's kind of obvious why it's called that. Um, I'm standing in a car park that's actually just around the corner and around the back from my dentist. <laughs> and I was walking back to my place and it occurred to me that I could get back to my place a hell of a lot more quickly if I could just walk through. Like, you see that gap between the white building and the the other building on the left? You go through there, and I'm not very far away from where I live, but I can't go that way. It would have been a great shortcut, but no. There's this fence, there's razor wire, uh, they don't want you to go through there. And for, uh, knowing what's on the other side of this fence, I fully understand why. But damn it. And geometry, it, it's, I was drawn to it by the shapes. The, the, it's, all, it's rectangles 
really. Rectangles and razor wire. That's what it's all about. This one's called Trees and X Tree. It's kind of contrived really. You've got trees obviously and here's a telegraph pole. Hey guess what it used to be a tree. It's like seeing his old mates or something. A little bit of anthropomorphizing there. I do that with photos. I, I anthropomorphize all kinds of things. Um, and that's really about all it is. I was, I was drawn to the something about telegraph poles and telephone wires radiating out from them. Um, they just make good photographs to my eye and um, having those trees either side of it like that it, it's sort of I hate to use the word juxtaposition actually i really like using the word juxtaposition but i think <laughs> contrived yeah i still like it this one is called gas because there's a gas bottle there um, it's got gas written on it. I don't know if that's butane or um, propane or whatever the hell it is, but it's basically dumped in someone's front garden. Uh, though that's not what initially drew me to the, the photo or the scene. It was the broken wall. I mean, something has hit it and knocked one of the top blocks off. Um, and I like broken things. So I was looking at that and something about the light it was still really fairly dark. It was early in the morning. That was all in shadow. Most of like their garden is in complete shadow. You've got, I think that's honeysuckle, um, the bush there. And they've just dumped a, a gas canister bottle thing into the bushes. It was still there last time I walked past a, a couple of weeks ago. Um, yeah, but I, I, I don't know. It appeals to me for reasons that I don't really understand, except it's just that knackered, really, it's a mess. And sometimes mess looks good or interesting anyway. This one's called Sunrise and Barbed Wire, for obvious reasons. Well, you can't necessarily tell that it's sunrise, but it is. It was early in the morning, the sun was coming up, there's still shadows being cast everywhere. But you can see those buildings in the background, they are lit by direct sunlight. Well, everything in the foreground is still in shadow. And there's barbed wire. So there's your title. But what I like about this is the balance of the shapes. It, it, triangles, rectangles, squares, and bam, there's this circle, a white circle. Slap bang, not in the middle at all. But there, it's in your face. You've got all these other hard edges and lines and things. And here's a circle with a with a almost as white rectangle below it, which, what does that signify? Nothing that I can think of. There's a certain anthropomorph, uh, anthropomorphization going on in my head where that's some kind of courtier's head and they've got like a, a big white collar and a white belt which is almost certainly not what it's intended to look like, but that's what it does in my brain. But it's the balance of the, the white objects with all the other darker objects. And then those lit buildings in the background and the barbed wire between them. It's just awesome. <laughs> I, can't, I can't explain it any other way. Um, yeah. It really, on just on an entirely visual level, I find that great. It's one of my favourites in the set, and it is done of, of recent photos. It's one of my most popular as well. Um, so I can't be the only one who likes it. It's also the last one in this video. I was going to do more. I was going to do everything from from the start of this video up to the last picture that I've got on Instagram today. But it's taking too long. I simply haven't got time. So uh, I'm going to call it a day for this video at this point. Now, this was the end of my uh, workshop set anyway. The next photos and ones that are already appearing on Instagram are of Chesterfield uh, with a completely different feel 
to a degree. Um, so I may or may not do another video of photos in the same way as I've done this, but of those Chesterfield photos, basically it's going to come down to what's the response to this video like. Do you want more like this um, of my Chesterfield set? Uh, yeah, if it gets a positive response, I'll do another one like this of those photos. But you can see them all on my Instagram page. I'll leave a link down in the description to my Instagram. Um, yeah, and I upload a photo every day. Uh, the only times I don't upload is if I've run out, like I stockpiled them and I have loads of them. Uh, so yeah, at, at the moment I've got enough to be going on for quite a long while. Photo every day on my Instagram. If you like this kind of stuff, you'll find lots of it there. Okay, gonna shut up now. Thank you for watching. Not without a knighthood. Not a chance. Anyway, Benway who? Oh. You lot. Uh. Hello. Uh. What? Oh. Please subscribe. Thank you. Can I go now?